Today's lesson is going to cover friction. Um, we have two different kinds of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. They are contact forces that act parallel to the surfaces in contact. The direction of kinetic friction will always be opposite the direction of motion. The direction of the force vector for static, for static friction is usually opposite the direction of the intended motion. But you must be careful to look at all information closely in order to determine the actual direction. For instance, a stationary box in the back of a pickup truck may have a static friction force in the direction of the acceleration vector. So sometimes it is switched, but usually friction is parallel to the surface it's going on, and it's usually opposite of the direction of motion. We have two different abbreviations for static friction and for kinetic friction. So this is the force of friction static, the force of friction kinetic. Here we have two equations which are valid equations. These are the equations that our book uses, but I will tell you that on the AP sheet, the AP uses a slightly different formula, and that is that they just use the general F sub F, and it is absolute value, is less than or equal to mu uh, times the normal force. So it's very similar to this. This is just what we use in the book, but this is what we use on AP. So I think you need to be a little bit more familiar with the AP version. Now there's a maximum because think about if something is like you've got a ramp and something is resting on this ramp. Well, at some point it's going to start sliding. And so the maximum is, well, how much static friction does it take? Like what's the maximum point to get to? So that's why that they have this, um, the AP kind of incorporates that by having the absolute value and also, excuse me, the less than. Okay, the mu is the coefficient of static friction. Mu sub s is the coefficient of static friction, which is a constant dependent on the surfaces in contact. And n, or in our case, f of n, f sub n, is the magnitude of the normal force. In other words, you can look up different values for mu mu is a coefficient of static friction and so there might be one coefficient for let's say um, wood rubbing against felt there might be a different coefficient for a hockey puck on ice and so the different types of friction are going to give us different values for our mu and then we have kinetic friction um, kinetic friction it occurs only once the static frictional force has been overcome. The coefficient of kinetic friction is usually less than the maximum coefficient of static friction for the two surfaces in contact. Therefore, the kinetic frictional force is usually less than the maximum static frictional force. The kinetic frictional force can be calculated using this equation. Um, let me talk about this equation in just a minute, but let's get back to our example on the ramp. If this is like sitting there and it's sitting 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 and it's not moving finally it moves well the f amount of static friction it took to keep it in place is higher than the amount of kinetic friction and you might have seen this on the wood that we were doing in class the other day when we were pulling it you should have seen that your static friction number was higher than your kinetic friction. Okay, once again, here is what our textbook uses for the formula. And again, the AP formula, just use the general F sub F, that's friction, is less than or equal to mu F sub N, and that is an absolute value. So again, it's just this, it's the same thing, it's just they stated a little bit differently on the AP sheet, so I want you to be familiar with that. And in this equation, mu sub k is the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is a constant dependent on the surfaces in contact, and n, or in our case, f sub n, is the magnitude of the normal forces. Okay, I think we're going to skip this little note, just cross this out. I think it's going to be more confusing than it is helpful, so let's just skip that part. Let's go on to example number 38. When drawing free body diagrams, how are the friction vector and the normal force always oriented with respect to each other? So let's draw a couple of them. They always are perpendicular, I will say that. Um, let's draw a couple of them. Let's say that we have our box sitting here and we're gonna draw our free body diagram. 
we know that we have the force of gravity going this way, we have the normal force going this way, and then let's say that the velocity is going this way. If the velocity is going that way, then the friction is going the opposite direction and it is perpendicular to the normal force. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, we will have things on an angle. So we have a box on a ramp. Okay, in that case, our force of gravity is still straight down. If we change our axes, then we have the normal force going this way. And let's say it is sliding down, so let's say it's going this way. Well, in that case, the friction is, op is going in the opposite direction. And again, notice that the normal force and the friction force are perpendicular to each other. Okay, we're going to work through a couple of examples on this page. Let's look at number 39. A rope is tied to a 12 kilogram crate that is resting on a rough horizontal surface. The rope is pulled with a tension of 20 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the floor. Let's take a minute to draw in some stuff that we know here. We've got our 20 newtons and it is acting at an angle of 30 degrees to the floor. We, of course, we have our force of gravity. Then find the static frictional force and the normal force acting on the crate. If the static frictional force is at a maximum, what is the coefficient of static friction between the crate and the floor? Okay, so this is a flat floor. It is actually, you know, the floor is flat. So we have a flat floor. We have our box here, crate. Um, force of gravity is 12 kilograms times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so if we multiply that out, we get negative 117.6 newtons. That's our force of gravity. It is a flat floor, and so the normal force is going to be going straight up because the, the floor is flat. Vector here, I'm going to change colors. Our vector here, we do need to break up into the x direction and the y direction. So let's say we call this 20 Newton. We call that the applied force. Then we need to break it up into the F sub y, which is applied, and the F sub x, which is applied. Because when we look at these all together, we need to be considering the sum of the forces in each direction. In other words, we need to set up something that says the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, and then something separate, which says the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Our y forces, if you take a look, our y forces is we have the force of gravity, we have the F sub y applied, and we have the normal force. And those all have to add up to be zero. Force of gravity, we just figured out, it's negative 117.6 newtons. Now, the y applied force, we have not figured that out yet. So let's take a second. I'm going to come up here. I'm getting a little bit messy here, but I'm going to come up here because I can see that the sine of 30 Fy applied, the hy hypotenuse, which is 20. Or in other words, 20 times sine of 30 is equal to the y applied force. And so if we take on our calculator, take 20 times the sine of 30, we get 10 newtons. So we are here um, this is a positive direction. If we look at what we're talking about, that is going up in the positive direction. So that's a positive 10 newtons. And we don't know the normal force. That's kind of what we're trying to figure out. And so we're going to solve this and we're going to find the normal force. So that gives us a negative 107.6. And so our normal force is 107.6 newtons. So find the static frictional force and the normal force acting on the crate. We found the normal force. Let's talk about the static frictional force. So the static frictional force, we need to now look at the x direction. So in the x direction, there's a vector I didn't show, and that is the frictional force, which is opposing the, the pull of the, the 20 Newton pull. And so I do need to take a minute to find my Fx applied. And that is going to be, because it's the adjacent side, 
it's going to be 20 times the cosine of 30. And so 20 times the cosine of 30 is 17.3. So we know that the other one is the, F of, uh, the frictional force, and those are really the only two that we have. So we're talking about the frictional force plus the F y, uh, sorry, Fx applied should add up to zero. If we look at our direction, the force of friction is going in the negative direction, the x applied is going in the positive direction. Let's just say F sub F plus 17.3 is equal to zero. So if we subtract that, then we get the answer of 17.3 and that should be a negative 17.3 newtons. And it is negative because it is going to the left. So the frictional force is negative 17.3. Question was, if that is the maximum, what is the coefficient of static friction between the crate and the floor? So the other equation that we have is that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. Mu is our coefficient of static friction. So our friction is negative 17.3 mu times the normal force, and our normal force is 107.6. So if I divide by 107.6, then I will get mu. And 17.3 divided by 107.6 is 0.161. And you might be wondering, where did your negative sign go, but this is a, it's always positive. So in the equation, actually, there is an absolute value bar here, and so this is always positive. Regardless of the direction, the mu is always positive. So the static frictional force, um, we found out to be negative 17.3 newtons. The normal force, we found to be 107.6 newtons, and the coefficient of static friction is 0.161. Next question, number 40. The coefficient of kinetic friction between a 50 kilogram crate and a horizontal floor is 0.2. The crate is then pulled by horizontal rope and starts to accelerate at 2 meters per second. What will be the tension in the rope? I'm going to just record some of this information. We have that the mass is 50 kilograms. We have that the um, mu coefficient of kinetic friction, kinetic friction is 0.2. And we have the acceleration is 2.0. The question is, what is the tension in the rope? All right, let's draw a diagram of what's happening. So we have this crate. It's a 50 kilogram crate. It must have gravity. And it is on a horizontal floor. The floor is flat, so our normal force is just going to be straight up, same length as the gravity. And then it is pulled by a horizontal rope and it starts to accelerate at 2 meters per second squared. It has a frictional force, and this is the force of tension. All right, we need to figure out some numbers. Um, our force of gravity is 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's actually a negative 9.8. So our force of gravity comes out to be a negative 40, excuse me, negative 490 newtons. If that's gravity, then our normal force is a positive 490 newtons because we are on a flat surface. So we need that number. Then what else do we need? Well, the tension in the rope is what we're looking for. We have this acceleration, which we haven't really talked about. Just a second ago, we did the sum of the forces in the y direction. Let's look at the forces in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. The sum of our forces means the frictional force plus the force of tension is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. The frictional force, the formula for frictional force is mu times normal force. And so mu is 0.2, normal force is 490, mass is 50 kilograms, acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So 0.2 times 490 is 98. So we have a 98 newtons over here plus the force of tension, that's what we're looking for. We have 100 newtons over here 
we're going to subtract. Where is my, I've got a negative mistake somewhere because my answer should be coming out to be 198. Um, the friction is going in the opposite direction. The friction is going in the opposite direction. So now if I add these together, I should come up with 198 newtons is the force of tension. So when you find the force of tension, we're talking about friction, you have to find the normal force. Even though it seems like it's going the opposite direction, I think instinctively you can understand that how much that weighs is going to vary the amount of friction, right? If it's really heavy, the friction is going to be really hard to overcome. If it's really light, the friction is not so hard to overcome. So that's why we had to include our normal force into the equation, even though it seems like it's going in the other direction, which it is, it's in the y direction, and these are in the x direction. Let's talk a little bit about equilibrium, and then we have one more example. What is true about an object's acceleration if it is at rest or moving with a constant velocity? If something is at rest or at a constant velocity, its acceleration is zero. So if we talk about the sum of the forces in the x direction is the mass times the acceleration in the x direction, and if our acceleration is zero, then that's just zero. And we could say the same thing in the y direction. It would be the mass times acceleration in the y direction. That's mass times zero, and that is just zero. So that's why sometimes we say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero, or the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. That's when it is at rest or has constant velocity. If there is acceleration though, then our equations change a little bit. Then our acceleration in the y direction is mass times acceleration in the y direction. And forces in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. If it is at rest or constant velocity, then its sum is zero. If it's not at rest, then we include that m times a. Okay, one last example, and this example actually is going to take us a little bit to get through, so let's try to get started here. Um, we might outline that what we know is that the mass is 205 kilograms, and the ramp is inclined at a 30 degree angle, and the coefficient of friction is 0.9, and I'm going to double check that as kinetic friction, and the log has an acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared. All right, that's what we know. Let's draw our diagram. We have a log. It's getting pulled up the rope, or pulled up a ramp. And it is getting pulled up by a rope, so we can draw in that. That is our force of tension. Of course, the weight goes straight down, and the normal force goes upwards and it is equivalent to the, excuse me, to the y component of the gravity. So this is my normal force. And so the frictional force, in this case it's kinetic, it is opposing the tension force. So there is our free body diagram. We need to break up and find some different pieces. So we need to find, we'll call this Fg of y, and we'll call this one Fgx. Well, first of all, the gravity, or the weight of it, is 205 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so that, when I multiply 205 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, that is a negative 2009 newtons. That's my weight, my gravity. Probably I'm going to need to break down my x and y component for that, right? So let's just go ahead and do that now. So if I said that, um, and that is a 30 degree angle in there. So I could say that the cosine of 30 is Fgy over the hypotenuse, or I could say that 2009, that's a negative, times the cosine of 30 is going to equal Fg in the y direction. And then I could say negative 2009 times the sine of 30 is going to equal Fg in the x direction. So if I multiply those out, the y is 1739.8 is Fg in the y direction, which is a negative, it's going down. The x direction, when I multiply that times the sine of 30, I'm going to get 1004.5.
And again, that is in going in the negative direction. Okay, so I found those values because now I just need to start adding these up in the x direction and the y direction. I'm going to start with my y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction we have in the y direction it should basically be zero. It's not going to be falling through that ramp at all so it should be adding up to zero. So the sum of the forces in the y direction are the normal force Fg sub x. Those are my only excuse me, Fg sub y. Those are my only y direction forces. So that means that the normal force is the opposite of the Fg sub y. So Fg sub y uh, was negative 1739.8. So my normal force is a positive 1739.8. Okay, found my normal force. I'm going to need that because later I'm going to have to do some calculations that require that. Um, the sum of the forces in the x direction is a little bit more complex and I'm actually going to, you need some space here, hopefully you've been writing small. I'm going to come down here because the sum of the forces in the x direction, this time it is moving. And so since it's moving, I have to use my ma equation going in the x direction. The sum of the forces that I'm talking about is, I'm talking about the frictional force. I'm also talking about F G sub X and I'm also talking about the force of tension and all of those forces have to add up to M A sub X. All right we haven't talked about force of friction yet maybe we need to come up here where this empty space was and talk about that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. Okay well the force of friction my mu was 0.9 my normal force is 1739.8 and so if I multiply those out I get 1565 and that is going in a negative direction isn't it so let's keep that negative there so that we know that is in a negative direction okay there is my force of friction so that is a negative 1565.86 plus my force of gravity in the x direction. I came up with that a second ago. That was a negative 1004.5 newtons plus my force of tension which is actually what I'm looking for and then that is supposed to be equal to my mass times the acceleration and so now I'm going to finish solving this. I add these two together and I get negative 2570.36 plus the force of tension is equal to, I multiply these together, when I multiply those I get 164. So now if I add that 2570 to both sides I'll get my force of tension which is 2734.36 newtons. Let's just go back up and make sure we've answered all of the parts of the question. It's asking for, all it's asking for is the tension of the rope. And we did find the tension in the rope. Now to get there we had to find the normal force, we had to break up our components, we had to find our frictional force. So we had to do quite a bit. But in the end we came up with a final answer for the force of tension. And so just remember again that since it was moving in the new x direction that that's why I use the ma sub x. When it's not moving, like it's not moving up and down in the y direction, that's when I set it equal to zero. And then remember your friction equation and then you can come up with it from there. We will work on some more friction examples in class tomorrow.